Hey YouTube is 669 you've got actually a game collection video for you and uh, this is my Xbox 360 collection uh, this is probably my biggest physical copy collection of games um, I got otherwise it'd probably be PC because I got tons of games on Steam because it's so cheap um, yeah I got my 360 back in 2007 I believe it was yeah and um, yeah, I've been, I didn't really have a good PC back then, so uh, most of my games, most of the new games I bought on the 360. And I still actually got a pro version, so it's, it's an old 360. My first one did break down, uh, got the red, red Ring of Death, but my, my second one actually still works. So that's great, but yeah, let's start. First we got Alan Wake. This was originally a, an exclusive. This is made by the same guys who made um, the Max Payne games and uh, Remedy, yeah. And uh, I thought it was a pretty good game. Um, it's not really scary, but overall it's different from a lot of stuff you get now. And it, it's just fun. It's kind of like a Stephen King novel, I guess. I believe actually the first thing they say in this game is Stephen King, which is kind of funny. But yeah, overall I thought it was a good game. Um, the lip sync is kind of crappy on this one. Uh, a lot of people picked up on that, but yeah, overall I'd recommend it since it's pretty cheap now, if you can get a hold of it. Next we got Alice, Madness Returns. Uh, I believe this came out in 2011. Um, yeah, really good year for games. Uh, this is definitely top 10 of 2011 games. Um, fantastic platformer. This is the sequel to um, American McGee's Alice. And you actually get American McGee's Alice with this game, get a code for it, so if you get it on PC, you get it on PC, and if you get it on 360, you get a version of 360. I actually haven't tried it yet, the uh, American McGee's Alice that is, because I already played it on PC, so I don't know. Um, yeah, overall, I definitely recommend this game. This game has like great graphics, and a it's, it's Alice in Wonderland, so it has a very unique very colorful style to it but it's also kind of like violent and dark in the same way and the game really keeps it interesting like it changes things up there's 2d levels and there's level I don't want to spoil anything but there's level where you become like a giant and you can stomp on people it's great definitely recommend this game if you like platformers moving on to Astro's Wrath um, got a game for really cheap so I thought like what the hell it's it's kind of a, like really silly Japanese anime kinda of like Dragon Ball you know not much of a storyline just like oh, I'm angry and I want vengeance and uh, the fun thing about this is it's like um, uh, there's a lot of quick time events basically so you, you have to be prepared for that you can also like run around and fight but it's nothing too special I got this for cheap, so I just like, uh, you know, might as well play it. But it's pretty fun. It's, it's quite a short game, but it's like crazy Japanese stuff. So if you're into that, I'd definitely recommend checking that out. Uh, moving on to Batman Arkham Asylum. And yeah, this is a great game. Kind of like uh, in the style of Metal Gear and bit. There's, you know, a mix of stealth and action at the same time. Um, yeah, most people have uh, probably heard of this game. Uh, overall, yeah, this is a great solid game, and uh, they just did a great job, Rocksteady, yeah, a great job, and of course, after Asylum, we got Arkham City, great game, um, I actually didn't like, you can play Scatman in this one, yeah, um, I actually didn't like this game as much as Arkham Asylum, I don't know why, there were just like too many puzzles, like to be able to complete everything, the first one I got all, all like all the riddles, but the second one like there's so many I was just like oh, I can't be bothered. Like more of everything doesn't always mean it's you know the best, but you know most people actually like Arkham City more, so whatever. Bayonetta, uh, this is a awesome awesome action game, kind of in the style of Devil May Cry, uh, made by Platinum Games, and uh, this is actually getting a sequel on the Wii U. Supposedly exclusive, but I hope not for long because I'm not sure I'm gonna buy a Wii U. Yeah, but this is like a crazy Japanese type of game. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of action. Basically, like you can 
do crazy combos and moves and you fight like enormous bosses just come one after another. So if you're like a fan of action games like Devil May Cry, I definitely recommend playing this game. She has like uh, guns on her heels. It's yeah, it's crazy. Moving on to Bioshock and uh, the original. Got actually the steel case edition. Can open that up for you. There we go. Yes, it comes with a steel. I actually got this quite cheap on uh, Amazon. Color manuals are so nice. Yeah, they don't do them anymore. They're gonna like get like two pages or something. Yeah, uh, probably one of my favorite games of all time. I should definitely play System Shock 2 because it's kind of the same thing and it's made by the same developer before this. Be yeah, a great game if you haven't played Bioshock. You really need to do that. And of course, after Bioshock 1, we got Bioshock 2. I actually got the special edition for that. Uh, mainly because you get a vinyl with this. And you get like get an art book and a bunch of awesome other stuff. Um, but o overall, I didn't think this game was nearly as good as the original. Um, it, was, it was a good game. But just, you know, it didn't have the same great story. It didn't really succeed better in graphics either. But overall, it was, it was pretty good. You know, if you like Bioshock 1... You probably like two, but not as much. Um, yeah, this was made by a different developer. Probably why it wasn't as epic as the first one. But overall, it's still decent, and it's dirt cheap now. Pretty much, like if you if you go like to bargain bin, first thing you see is like Bioshock Two. Um, Bioshock Infinite. This is actually what I'm playing right now. Uh, so this is the latest game I bought. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. This pretty much get like got like great great ratings um, yeah I uh, can't say much because I haven't finished it yet but supposedly it has a great ending um, yeah this game is amazing so far should probably get a PC version because I don't know kinda looks a bit dated now on the 360 still solid though um, moving on yeah, yeah Brutal Legend the Team Schafer game by Double Fine of course um, yeah, this is probably like the most metal game there is. Has a great metal soundtrack, like everything from um, the old school heavy metal to uh, even black metal stuff like, like um, Viking metal, like uh, Enslaved. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty solid game. Uh, this, I, I think this game kind of tried to be a lot of things at once. It's trying to be an adventure game, as well as an action game, as well as a racing game. And a uh, RTS. Um, didn't really think it needed the RTS element, but overall, it was a really fun game. It has tons of cameos like Ozzy on there and uh, Lemmy from Motorhead. Um, yeah, if you like metal, you owe it to yourself to play this game. Or if you're a Team Schafer fan. And next, we got Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger. This is a 2D fighting game. Made by uh, the guys who made King of Fighters, I believe. Pretty solid. You actually, I got actually got a uh, the limited edition. That that's like the reason I got this game because it was really cheap, and you get like a um, you get an art book and uh, a DVD. I've never watched. It supposedly has like teach you the moves or something. I don't know. Overall, this is a fun game. I'm not really big on fighting games, but I just like you know play them you know for my friends or at my house like. Play some fighting games, just play this and has like crazy Japanese stuff in it. Um, oh, yeah, this. <laughs> this is my only Call of Duty game Modern Warfare 2. Uh, I played COD 4 a bit at a friend's house, and I never, I never played the old World War 2 games. Uh, I always liked the um, Medal of Honor when they did those back then. Um, but this was the first one I played because it was like so much hype. Everyone was like, oh, this game. And, uh, so I played it, and the single player campaign was kind of like, eh. So I didn't really care for the story. It was like, just, oh, Russia invades uh, US. Like, oh, okay, whatever. Um, but I played it multiplayer for like a month, I believe. And then I kind of got bored of it. But I don't know, it was alright, I guess. I, don't know. I didn't really care enough to buy any other Call of Duty games. Moving on. 
Castlevania, Lords of Shadow. Um, yeah, this was like made by Mercury Steam, but where was the con? Yeah, there it is. Kojima put the name on this. I don't know why. Probably just to sell more copies. And uh, not really Castlevania game. Kind of like more like God of War. Definitely time of combat, but has some great graphics and voice acting. Sean Connery's actually in this game. Um, but yeah, the, overall it was pretty solid. I didn't really care for the ending. I didn't like the twist. I was just like, uh, really? And the last boss was really lame. Uh, if you know what I'm talking I'm not going to spoil anything, but if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the guy who kind of looked like Marilyn Manson. Um, yeah, a, a decent game for the graphics. It's pretty much worth getting this game for graphics because they look really, really great. You get some, see some great scenery and stuff like that. Um, it wasn't. A, it's not a bad game, but it doesn't really feel like a Castlevania game. Kind of more like a gothic version of uh, God of War or something. Yeah, this game, Condemned. Uh, this is a launch game for the Xbox, actually. It was a launch game. Um, yeah, this is the first person detective horror game, I guess, from Monolith. Uh, awesome game. This really looks dated now. <laughs> I played it, I guess, what, a year ago or something like that. Yeah, it looks really dated, but uh, it's a fun game. Uh, if you like horror games or monoliths other games, you should definitely pick up. I think it's on PC as well. And got Condemned 2. This is not on PC, actually, only on consoles, which kind of sucks. Uh, some people really didn't like this game because... Um, it had like a supernatural element to it, and people are like, oh, that's the explanation you get. Like, it just kind of was a silly story move, I suppose. But overall, this game was fun. I really enjoyed it. Combat is a bit more refined than this one. And if you like Condemned 1, I still recommend playing this, even though this game got a lot of hate. Um, still some great, like, scary moments. Not, not as bad as the, um, oh, the freaking mannequins. Oh, and that was the second game, actually. Yeah, and the first one was the locker guy. That was creepy as fuck. Um, yeah. Chronicles of Riddick. This is made by Starbreeze. Swedish developer. Um, this got uh, Butcher Bay, Escape from Butcher Bay on it and Salt and Dark Athena. And it's the HD re remake of uh, Escape from Butcher Bay. I uh, didn't care for this game at all, actually. This game from Butcher Bay has like tons of, uh, everyone says it's a great game, but I did not care for it. And uh, the Salt and Dark Fiend was even worse, in my opinion. I guess, um, I don't know, I, I just, I mean, Escape from Butcher Bay is definitely well paced compared to Dark Fiend. Like, the, the last boss fight in Dark Fiend was just like, what? It's just ridiculous. But, I don't know, I just did not care for these games. I didn't think the level design was well done, and the stealth game was kind of awkward. Sometimes they end just spotty, sometimes they don't. Yeah, I don't know. Didn't like it. The Darkness, another Star Wars game, and this is probably my favorite Star Wars game. Do not have the sequel to this yet. It was made by another developer, so it probably wasn't as good. From uh, the footage I saw, anyway. Yeah, this is a really, really great game. Um, you can, like, it's a first-person shooter, I suppose, and you have, like, these evil darkness arms that can do like fucked up stuff and it's it's not open world but you can like move around in different areas like in um, DSX for example you can like take the subway to different stations and like go around to people's houses and stuff like that and you actually go to hell in this game twice uh, yeah if you like first person shooters like they're a little bit different to do some more interesting things I definitely recommend playing this game rather than fucking Dark Athena. Uh, more dark things. Dark Sector. I picked this up at a bargain bin like ages ago. This was actually the game that broke my original Xbox. I got the Red Ring. Uh, Red Ring of Doom on. Um, yeah. Uh, this game is alright I guess. It's, it's a third person shooter. And you have like this thing that you throw at people that comes back to you. I guess it's like a boomerang or something. Look at this, look at this, the shortest description ever. <laughs> of any game I've seen. Just pictures. Uh, it's kind of has like a Resident Evil 4 element to it, but I don't know. It's, just, it, it's decent at best, I suppose. It had a lot of bugs when it first came out. Um, 
at least in a multiplayer side. This game I definitely would recommend. This is Darksiders, uh, made by uh, Vigil Games and published by THQ just recently. Unfortunately, went under. Uh, this is a great action fantasy game. It mixes like elements of uh, God of War and uh, Zelda even, and uh, yeah, it's just really fun game. It has really great art style to it, like you can see here. Yeah, it's it's it, it like uh, it's kind of like a comic book artsy art style to it. I suppose if you like that. You like this game, um, yeah, really, really solid action adventure game. You play as a uh, war, one of the horsemen of the apocalypse, in it. And moving on, we got Dark Siders Two. Um, yeah, this was actually. Did anyone? I don't think anyone got Dark Siders when THQ was bought up, so I don't know who got the rights to it. I don't think anyone did, which is kind of sad. So we're probably not gonna see more Dark Siders games. Become Death. So here he plays Death, which is War's brother, I believe. I suppose, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I didn't like this game as much as the first one because they added like a bunch of random loot to it and shit, and it was kind of more like Diablo. So like, all the chests you like, you bust your ass up to get like all the walls in them. Like, oh, these are like the crappy boots, you know. But really, other game you like, kind of like you could gather like the armor of the apocalypse and shit. Which is way more badass. So I think they should have stuck to the more simple version of that. But I don't know, just me. It's still a solid game. has tons of uh, extra content on it as well. So yeah, if you like Dark Souls 1, uh, you probably like this. But I don't care for it as much. Then we got Dante's Inferno. I uh, got to Death Edition. I actually got this because it was uh, like uh, it was selling after uh, stock or something, so I got this really cheap. Um, this was kind of a God of War clone. It was still it's pre still pretty decent. Like apparently we were inspired by the Divine Comedy, even though it was nothing like the game. Um, yeah, but it was still fun to like kind of adventure through the uh, different circles of hell and stuff like that. And see how um, the enemies were different and how the uh, surroundings were different and stuff like that. I actually get a um, Isaac from De Dead Space uh, costume on here. It's pretty sweet. Uh, overall, it was decent. It was quite short and not as good as God of War. But I guess if you're uh, really, it's really cheap. So if you have nothing else to do, you can play this. So we're just gonna fucking get this in here. God damn it! There we go. And speaking of Dead Space, we got ah uh, Dead Space, also made by uh, Visceral Games. That's what we call it, right? Visceral Games, I believe so. Yeah, the original Dead Space. Um, yeah, this was a really good game. I liked it a lot. Um, I don't really consider Dead Space a horror game, because an action, uh, action game with horror elements, I suppose. Like, uh, it's a lot like Resident Evil, or the modern Resident Evil games, like Resident Evil 4 and onward. Resident Evil 4 had some horror elements, but overall it was kind of an action game. So I wouldn't really call it that. But yeah, this game was uh, quite good. I really liked it. And now it's turned into a big franchise. And, uh, of course then we got Dead Space 2. Um, this was quite good as well. It was a longer game, and you go back to the original ship. And do some as well. And, um... Yeah, but it was just way too actiony uh, compared to the first game. Like at the last levels, you just like get attacked by tons of enemies in every room. Pick up tons of health and ammo. Go to the next room, get attacked by tons of enemies there. And um, yeah, I actually uh, I think this had multiplayer as well, but it was crap. Um, I think the original game is a bit better. I think the length of the original game is really good, but this one was fun as well. I'm not sure if we're gonna get the third one. Everyone said it was way even more actiony than the previous two, so I don't, I don't know. I'm really down to that for that. I like my horror games, horror, not action, really. And um, more D stuff. Dead Rising. This is the uh, zombie game by Capcom. Um, never actually completed this because of the bloody uh, time level. You have to do everything on time in this game, which kind of sucks. That was like the reason I didn't like the game as much. And the funny thing, like, like the shortest time limit is the very first playthrough. 
So like if you manage to beat it, then it will get easier, which I didn't get. Like shouldn't be the other way around. Like first you get more time and then like beat the game under less time. That make more sense. Supposedly the uh, second game is better, but I don't know. You pretty much go around and you can like pick up any items and smash zombies head in them with them. Like you go around the mall, just like in Dawn of the Dead. And you can also take the photographs and uh, save like survivors and shit. And you get like spammed by this guy on the freaking radio. God. Um, another fighting game, Dead or Alive 4. I got this ages ago. Um, yeah, this game was it's pretty fun, I guess. If you, uh, some people are Dead or Alive fans, I didn't. I'm not really a big Dead or Alive fan. I don't know. It was just kind of like a cheap game I bought for the fun of it. Um. Uh, yeah, it's pretty solid. It's a pretty solid game. It's it's quite fast. Like the health goes down way, way fast, and it's very very technical, I guess. Um. Yeah, overall it's, it's a pretty decent game. I've I've heard Dead or Alive Five wasn't that really that good. Moving on. Yeah, Deadly Premonition. Um. This is kind of like kind of of a cult game, I suppose. Um. Got a really bad ratings from like, when it first came out, like from IGN and shit like that. It's kind of a Twin Peaks esque game. Everything is done kind of on purpose, I suppose. Like the graphics aren't that good, and sometimes the like the controls are really really awkward on purpose, I suppose. And it, it it's 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 a really fun game. There's a lot of like hints at Twin Peaks, and just overall it's really quirky and uh, weird. Um, if you like kind of detective horror games and you don't mind like the the whole cheesy aspect of it I definitely recommend playing this game it's quite fun the as soon as you get used to the uh, shooting controls or shooting mechanics you'll get the hang of it moving on Devil May Cry 4 yeah um, so yeah this is the continuation of the Devil May Cry games so it's the last in the first a timeline, I suppose. I don't know since they rebooted it now, but yeah, here you play as Nero. You have the Devil Bringer, and um, you can play as Dante as well. So you play like half the levels with Nero and half the levels with Dante. Um, overall, I thought the game was quite good. Uh, some people didn't like Nero. Uh, <laughs> I think they hate the new Dante even more. But overall, this game is quite solid. I liked it a lot. Actually, it got some hate, but I, I don't know. People are just whining. Um, definitely better than Devil May Cry 2, that's for sure. Yeah, solid, solid action game. It's quite cheap now, too, if you want to pick it up. More DEs. Dragon Age Origins. Um, great RPG from uh, Bioware. I actually got the uh, Ultimate Edition now on PC, which I recommend playing this on PC. Again, got this before I got my... Uh, updated my PC, so got this on 360. Actually, played through it twice because it was that great. Uh, if you like RPGs and making like moral choices and shit, this is a really, really great game. Get the Ultimate Edition on PC if you can. Uh, don't think this game requires much, but yeah. Great, great RPG. And it's really long. You can definitely put in like 100 hours in it um, if you get all the DLC and stuff. Which you get in the Ultimate Edition. It's quite cheap. So. Ah, this game. Uh, two, I think this came out in 2010. Or 11. I don't remember. I think it might have been 2011. Really good year for games. Um, this is Enslaved Odyssey to the West, done by Ninja Fury, the guy who made Heaven and Sword, and the new DMC. Uh, I have not played the new DMC, and um, of course it got a lot of flack. Uh, from what I've seen, it was it looked it looked it didn't look like Devil May Cry, but it looked alright as its own game. So I might like pick it up at one point. Um, yeah, but this game I actually really really enjoyed. Um, fantastic uh, art style and uh, graphics, as well as the f uh, facial animations on this, really great, and voice acting as well. Um, you play as Monkey, and you have, this is Trish, I believe her name was. You kind of like have to you escape from a um, slavery, basically, and you have to like uh, make your way around like the overgrown wilderness, which is which was um, like uh, an old city and stuff like that. So this is kind of like post-apocalyptic game, but it, it's a different style to it. It's not like, you know, dark and grey and, you know, miserable. This is kind of like, ah, oh, you know, everything's overgrown and green and there's like, 
with an not animals, but just like a bunch of like uh, robots to try to kill you and stuff like that. Yeah, this was a really solid game. The uh, the action element in it is not too great. I mean, it's very simplistic in terms of combat, but overall, like it was the storyline and uh, the art style definitely make this game uh, great. Probably my top ten of I think it was 2010 or 11. I don't know. Yeah, 2010. This is my top 10 of the 2010 games. Uh, this game, Fear. Um, yeah, this is a the uh, horror first-person shooter by Monolith, of course. Um, great game. I would probably recommend play this on PC. Um, but yeah, whatever. I got a need for 16. It's quite a used version, as you can see. Um, yeah, this is really, really solid. Uh, First person shooter with, with great horror elements, and uh, I think most people have heard of Fear by this point. Uh, but yeah, I definitely recommend playing the first game. Uh, the expansions I've heard to this are crap, so don't play those. I haven't, but that's what I've heard. You got Fear 2 Project Origin, which kind of like ignored all the expansions and the storylines in those, and just continued on from the uh, first game. Uh, this game, game got some flack, I don't know why. I thought this game was great. Uh, Pretty much as good as the first one. Uh, yeah, really, really solid game. Um, I don't know if it's as scary as the first one. I think it's on the same um, level, I suppose. Uh, definitely up updated graphics, and you can like uh, aim in sights and stuff like that now. Kind of more modern, I suppose, than the first Fear, but still really solid game. And then we got Fear Free Play. Which was not developed by Monolith, was developed by uh, Day One Studios. Yeah, this kind of really got a like, Call of Duty vibe around it. You could like rank up and stuff like that, and I just did not care for the storyline. And yeah, I don't know. It wasn't scary at all. I mean, it got it got some good, interesting moments, but overall, it was really boring. Especially if you played through the second tank of players, this guy, and you can use like powers and shit, which makes it more fun. I don't know if I'll do that, but. Um, Supposedly the only good thing about this game was the multiplayer, but, you know, like, it's kind of like Call of Duty, I guess, so, like, if you like that, just play Call of Duty, right? Um, yeah, this game was not very good. That's what, exactly what I feared since I, uh, read that it wasn't going to be developed by Monolith, so, yeah. And the, actually, the, uh, co-op element of it, if you play on split screen, it's horrible, it's unplayable, just garbage, I don't know what the fuck they were thinking of that. Yeah, and this actually was the reason I bought, or not, not the only reason, but the main reason I bought an Xbox 360, because I really want to play Fable 2, because I really liked the first Fable, because I had the original Xbox and played through the first Fable like tons of times, just really, really liked it, and this was a fucking disappointment. Um... I played through the first Fable like, I don't know, up to 10 times or something. I've still only played through this game once. I've tried playing through it again, but just got bored. Um, pretty much rehashed story, and it's kind of like, it's it's later in time than the first one. The first one was kind of more medieval time, which was better, in my opinion. And yeah, I don't know, I didn't like this game at all. Uh, it w it's alright. I mean, it's worth one play for a bit overall. I thought it was a disappointment. Uh, pretty crappy graphics, even. I mean, for. for what, when did this came out? I don't remember. Yeah, it was bugged as hell, too. So I had tons of problems with it when I first played it. Um, yeah. Disappointment. Some people really love this game. I don't know why. I like the first Fable much more. Lost Chapters on PC is probably the best version. Uh, Fable 3. This game also got a lot of flack. Uh, I liked it a bit better than the second game, actually. I liked the element of, like, uh, building your own kind of empire, making choices that way. And, it, you know, it was supposed to be like, oh, if you do the good, the good things in-game, and then you won't have any money. But I still managed to get, like, all the money I needed. Even though the game, I got like a cheap saying, you had to make some hard decisions. But, you know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, could have been better, that's for sure. Peter Molyneux ran with his mouth again, and 
So this game is going to be amazing, the best game ever, and of course, didn't really deliver. Better than the second game, though. I still recommend the first one. If you can play the last chapter's version, it's probably the best fable, in my humble opinion. Fallout 3, another game I got before my updated PC, and I got the uh, Game of the Year edition on PC now. Yeah, not much to say, everyone knows this game is awesome. Made by Bethesda, of course, who made the Elder Scrolls games. Yeah, great fucking game. Still have not played um, New Vegas yet, I should really get to that. Ah, here is <laughs> we have a great game. Final Fantasy 13. Yeah, people really love this game. Um, yeah, I did not think this game was horrible. And a lot of people thought this game was horrible. Uh, it was it was alright. Best, I guess. Yes, it was Corridor, and yeah. The graphics and the art style were really good, though. I uh, did not hate the combat system. Some people did. I don't know. Um, yeah, but definitely, in terms of Final Fantasy standards, this definitely does not hold up. Um, this is kind of like the same level as Final Fantasy X-2, I suppose. I don't know. Um, I guess, I don't know if it's better or worse. Um, but supposedly Final Fantasy thirteen two is a bit better. Um, yeah, I hate, what I hate about this game when, like, you get to the open world element, whatever. It's supposed to be, like, this just great green plane with tons of, like, dinosaurs and shit. You have to fight a bunch of, like, annoying fetch quests and just crap. Just, like, grind quests and then you can, like, fight the final boss. That was horrible. I know what people said, like, oh, that's when the game gets good. Like, when you get to the big green plane and grind. No. Yeah, this game was kind of a disappointment. 13.2 is supposed to be better. I don't know if I'll play it. I'd rather play an old Final Fantasy game. Um, Gears of War. This was the first game I bought on the 360. But along with my 360 Pro, yeah. Uh, yeah. Not much to say. This was like one of the first um, third-person shooters that kind of like really focused on the um, cover aspect of it. You know, you could crouch and uh, you could uh, not, not crouch, but you could take cover almost anything like that. This had some really great graphics when it first came out, and like the uh, Mad World trailer, just like oh, got really really pumped for like you know next generation graphics. So that's like was also one of the big reasons I got the 360. And uh, of course we got Gears of War 2. I sorry, I got to sneeze. What? Oh, nope, I guess not. Um, Gears of War 2 kind of falls in the same line as Gears of War 1. Um, this had a little bit of a better storyline, I'd say. Um, yeah, still really mainly like a great fun online game to play with your friends. And Gears of War 3, yeah. And of course, these are all Xbox 360 exclusives, um, except the first Gears of War that was on PC as well. Um, yeah, this this was also pretty good. Not as good as the second game in terms of like the single player campaign. It was pretty re not kind of boring on this one, honestly. But the multiplayer aspect of it, this is, was great. Like tons of new shit they added. Uh, they updated horde mode and stuff like that. Yeah, um, so I'm pretty kind of like. Getting sick of the series now, so I'm not gonna get Gears of War Judgment. I think um, it's enough Gears of War for me at this point. So, moving on, we got GTA 4, the one and only. Um, yeah, it's GTA, it's awesome. Um, I thought this game had some problems, I didn't like the driving that much. Um, I know they tried to keep it more realistic, but yeah, it's like freaking break, like, ages before I actually had to make a turn. I, you know, you sometimes, like, you falling on some guy, and you crash once, you get stuck, and you're fucked. You have to redo the whole mission. But I was, it was really good. The story was really nice. The graphics were amazing. The whole world. Um, and the game is great. So I'm really psyched about GTA V. That'll be interesting. It kind of sucks that going back to San Andreas. So soon, I'd rather see uh, Vice City again. That'd be freaking awesome. Uh, episodes from Liberty City, this is the two um, DLC for GTA 4. So that's uh, Lost and Damned and uh, The Battle of the Gate only. Both are really good. Lost and Damned is pretty short. 
Actually, a lot of uh, awesome metal and uh, soundtrack of Lost and Damned. You got some Sepultura and um, Cannibal Corpse, some At the Gates and shit. It's awesome. And the Battle Gate Tony is also good. Um, hated the freaking helicopter mission in the Battle Gate Tony. That was fucking annoying as hell overall. And the freaking the bike races in Lost and Dan where they like the competitors beat you with bats while you're driving. Yeah, that that got annoying quite quick. Uh, moving on to uh, Microsoft's favorite franchise, I suppose, Halo Three. Not much to say. Everyone knows what Halo is. <laughs> At some point, if you into game, you probably do. Yeah, I liked Halo Three. It was solid. Uh, it was a really good game. I remember having a lot of fun playing this with friends. I like to get it like. Four versus four teams on two big TVs. It's great. Halo 3 ODST. This is the, I guess the expansion or whatever to Halo 3. Uh, quite short. People complained complained this was like um, sixty dollar game, and it had some multiplayer maps and a really short campaign, which was it was a pretty decent campaign, I guess. But I got this for really cheap right before the uh, Reach beta launch, because uh, you get Reach in this game. So I got it for that basically. It was really cheap, so it was worth it for the Halo Reach beta, I suppose. And the campaign was alright. Uh, and here's Halo Reach, of course. Um, kind of disappointed in this game. I didn't care for it too much. Um, the single player was quite boring. The multiplayer was fine, I suppose. Not as awesome as Halo 3, I guess. Maybe just tired of Halo at the point of playing this. But overall, it was like, eh, I don't know. Supposed to be like Bungie's last Halo game, and I don't know. Didn't really feel like it was like a great end. It was kind of is it was a prequel to the original Halo. So when the attack happened and all that, I don't know. I didn't care for it too much, honestly. Now we got Halo Four, which made by Free Four Free Studios. There was like, oh, Halo Four is gonna suck because that made Bungie, and they actually made a better fucking game than Bungie. Uh, this was better than Halo Reach for sure. Not bad, better than the original Halo, but um, better than Reach, I thought. And really solid game. This is the first one, Master Chief Talks, I believe, yeah. And Cortana was really good in this game. Great voice acting and uh, the graphic looks look uh, really great in this. Uh, overall, oh, yeah, it's a solid Halo game. If you're not sick of Halo by now, probably have picked this up. I don't know if I'm going to be <laughs> getting more Halo games. kind of feel about them is almost the same as I do, but... Gears of War, um, and the freaking, the original soundtrack, the Halo theme wasn't in this, which kind of sucked, what the, what the fuck was that, like that is awesome, that's like the best Hal Halskin ever, but that theme is just great, um, Kingdoms of Amla Reckoning, this is made by, uh, what do you call it, Day 30 Studios or something, which was, this was kind of like funded by this baseball player, and didn't go all too well, and the studio got shut down, and because the game didn't sell too well, they were originally planning to make this an MMO, and they realized they couldn't do that, and so they made um, a single player instead. Which I don't know if it was worked too well for them. Uh, yeah, this uh, baseball get player got really like uh, liked World of Warcraft. So he wanted to make World of Warcraft himself, and didn't work out too well. Uh, I guess this is kind of a mix between Fable and. World of Warcraft, I suppose. Uh, the combat is very, very like Fable. It's kind of an action oriented, like each button is a weapon, and there's a shield and stuff like that. So the combat is, is quite nice. The bow mechanic is a bit awkward, I thought, but overall, the combat is pretty solid. Um, what kills this game for me, kind of, like it doesn't, doesn't suck. It's it's pretty good game, but like the story is so boring because it, it was meant to be an MMO, so like the story. Does not really play a big part of the game, I suppose. It's a lot of like fetch quests and do this, go there. I don't know. The story didn't really click with me, but the game is decent, I guess. You know, I, I've not played through it, but I've played uh, over ten hours, and it, it, it's all right, I guess. If I really feel like going back, playing something fable-like, I'd continue playing this game. Then we got L.A. Noir. Great game. Um, also made by a studio that recently uh, got shut down, Team Bondi. Apparently the facial capture system they used was really, really expensive. So even though the game did sell quite well, 
uh, they were kind of doomed for bankruptcy, which sucks. I believe Rockstar still owned the rights to Eleanor. I don't know if they're going to make a sequel. Maybe it's too expensive for them. But yeah, this is a great detective game. You kind of play detective. I think it's the 1950s. And, uh, you know, you get to, you know, investigate everything from, uh, you know, uh, drug-related crimes to um, robberies to murder and stuff like that. It's a really, really interesting game. The ending was kind of, uh, but overall this was an awesome game and the facial animations are great. Um, and you get to like, kind of interrogate people and, you know, see if they're lying or not, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, definitely interesting. Worth checking out. Love these kind of games that are, you know, try different new things. Moving on to uh, a Suda51 game. Lollipop Chainsaw. And yeah, I'm, I'm a fan, I guess, of Suda51. He makes, like, really weird, quirky Japanese games. Um, yeah, they're really fun. And this you play as a uh, kind of, like, Buffy-esque um, cheerleader. But instead of vampires, she kills uh, zombies. She's a zombie hunter. And this uh, this is a boyfriend. And he was bitten by a zombie, so he had to cut off his head. And apparently he still lives or something, so he falls around. And you can, like, pop on his head to different zombies and play, like, zombie basketball or zombie baseball. It's, it's, it's quite insane. Um, I hated zombie baseball, by the way, which is crap. But otherwise, it's a really, really fun, quirky game. If you're familiar with Studio 51, he's done uh, No More he Heroes and uh, Killer 7. Another game I'm going to show you soon as well. Um, yeah, this is a really solid game. It's kind of an arcade style action game. You know, if you like the kind of quirky Japanese stuff, there's like a lot of that. There's kind of like a. Um, some stuff about music as well. There's like a punk themed uh, boss, and there's a goth themed boss, and. Stuff like that. And there's a black metal viking dude. That has like a giant uh, ghost ship that floats in the air. It's really cool. So yeah, if you're um, into that kind of quirky, crazy Japanese. Uh, but not too... It, it, I guess it's a bit westernized as well. But yeah. Check out the gameplay and see if you're into Lollipop Chainsaw. Moving on. Oh, crap. I had to put all my games up there because I don't have any more space for them at the moment. Moving on to this, Lost Odyssey, one of the best um, JRPGs on the 360. This was made by the guys who worked on Final Fantasy um, 6, I'm not sure, or maybe early Final Fantasies. Yeah, this is a really great old school JRPG, you know. Um, it comes on four discs. <laughs> um, yeah, great art style. This is um, typical JRPG stuff. Um, you know, it's not real time combat. It's all uh, uh, what we call it um, turn based. There's like a ring system. If you like, you have to look do like a little quick time event and hit the ring properly. And you know, the better your time is, the better damage you and stuff like that. Uh, overall, this is a great solid JRPG. On the 360, probably one of the best on the console. Um, great storyline, interesting characters. You know, all all the JRPGs you really need, and an in interesting world, kind of steampunkish. Um, mixed with kind of like Indian uh, type uh, type like architecture and stuff like that. It's it's quite interesting. Definitely recommend checking this out if you're into JRPGs. It's quite long as well. It has a lot of content in it. Um, moving on. To Lost Planet, this was also originally, actually, if you believe that, an Xbox 360 exclusive. Uh, but it then later came out on PC and PS3 and everything. And this came out around the same time as Gears of War. Uh, which is, yeah. And it's also an action game, it's a third person shooter. What's cool about this game, you control mechs and stuff like that. You can jump around mechs and do all kinds of cool shit and fight bosses. and Yeah, it actually, actually had some pretty decent sized bosses, like, uh, big fights and stuff like that. The end boss was quite easy to, which was kind of disappointed. Uh, overall, this game was pretty solid. Um, the control is a bit different in terms of the camera and stuff like that than most uh, third-person shooters. But overall, I'd say give this a try. It's definitely not a bad game. The storyline is not great, but overall, it's a fun game. Um, I've heard the second Lost Planet sucks. 
but I have not played it. Moving on with kind of a gem in the 360 collection, I suppose, or this current generation. Um, Margin and Forsaken Kingdom. Uh, this is made by, uh, I don't know who's made by, but it's uh, published by Bandai. And uh, some guys, uh, here we go, directed by Yoshiko Komoto, Resident Evil and Street Fighter fame. Yeah, so this is a quite interesting game. This is kind of a um, third person action adventure game, more adventure. Um, in the style of um, something like Jack and Daxter, or something like that. But it's kind of made in a Metroidvania type world. It's in 3D, of course, it's a 3D game, but uh, the style is kind of similar to Metroidvania. You go back and forth between the map, kind of looks like uh, Metroid a bit. And it's really fun. You play as uh, this guy. Don't remember his name. Um, and uh, you have this big guy with you, who's the margin. And you kind of work together to defeat monsters and uh, free the land of all the evil uh, tar people, whatever. They're like evil dudes in this game. Uh, yeah, pretty fun game. You, know, you don't get a lot of like uh, these kind of games anymore, like third person platformer uh, adventure games that are colorful and shit. You know, not seen, not like PS2 and like the. Um, Last generation kind of did good with that, but now we don't get a lot. So I picked up this game, and it was quite fun actually. And like any old school game, kind of like um, you have to like complete everything to get like the uh, good ending of the plot. But yeah, overall, it's a really solid game. I recommend it if you're into platformers. Uh, moving on to Mass Effect, the only classics edition game I have for the 360 because you get free DLC and. Uh, making of um, DVD which is great yeah Mass Effect don't really have to say much about this game I believe most people are familiar with it colored manual yes uh, fantastic uh, sci-fi um, RPG slash third person shooter uh, great storyline you know kinda like an epic Star Wars type of scenario uh, you play the hero basically and you can uh, make more choices, either Paragon or uh, I don't remember what I was, other one was called. But yeah, um, yeah, every, most people are familiar with Mass Effect. It's a great game. So um, the first one I liked a lot. I liked the uh, could drive around in the car and explore the plants and stuff. But they removed a lot of it in uh, Mass Effect Two. Uh, we kind of changed a lot. It was way more simplistic. It was way more of an action game, I suppose. But I still really, really enjoyed this. And with all the DLC, it was actually after EA bought up Bioware. As you can see, this was published by Microsoft. Um, yeah, so there was tons of more DLC with this game and all that stuff. But still, with the DLC, this was a great game. I really, really enjoyed. It. Pretty much, uh, almost, pretty much on the same level as Mass Effect One. Uh, great game. And I liked the fact that, you know, you had to make different choices to make sure, like, all the team members survive or whatever you choose to do. Uh, you know, definitely, it's really great to see, like, a long series, like a trilogy, where you can, you know, uh, take the games you've done, take the stuff you've done in the first game, transfer it over to the second and the third game. That's kind of unusual, and that's a really great way to do it. I think uh, that's what makes Mass Effect so special. Um, Mass Effect 3... Uh, probably my least favorite Mass Effect. Of course, there's the uh, ending thing. Um, I thought the uh, extended cut DLC kind of did better. Better would connect. No thanks. Um, yeah, the, the extended cut DLC kind of made it better, but overall, this is kind of weakest Mass Effect. Even though I really enjoyed most of it, and I really liked how they tied up a lot of the knots. Uh, from stuff you did, all the way from the first game, like, even, like, I had a DLC in the first game that I did, and it still showed up in this game, like, uh, that was really cool, except, you know, for the fact that, you know, gathering all your, spoiler alert, I guess, uh, gathering all your, um, armies and all that shit didn't really matter in the end, but whatever, still a solid game, kind of crappy end, crappy way to end, such an awesome series, but, Overall, uh, yeah, if you haven't played a Mass Effect series, you definitely should do that. And please uh, get to extend cut DLC. 
Mortal Kombat, probably my f one of my uh, probably my favorite um, uh, fighting game on uh, this current gen. I don't have Street Fighter Four actually. I should probably get that on the PS3. I know it's supposed to play with the um, thing, arcade sticks, but I can't be bothered buying those. But I heard D-pad sucks for uh, Street Fighter on the 360. It's probably get it on the PS3 instead. But yeah, Mortal Kombat 9, great, awesome, badass, you know, uh, M-rated. Uh, it's Mortal Kombat, it's bloody, it's visceral, it's just great. You know, you can do like, the X-ray moves and... Uh, you know, the finishing moves are awesome. Just you know, it's Mortal Kombat. Uh, it kind of sucks. I didn't have my PS3 when I bought this. Otherwise, I get, would get it on the PS3 because Kratos there. And you don't get anything on uh, the 360 version, which sucks. You should have put Alan Wake in. That was uh, it was the character everyone was voting for. That'd be funny, but whatever. Yeah, great, uh, great fighting game. Then we have my only racing game for the 360. That's the Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. Um, I actually got it because I wanted to play this uh, um, uh, with a friend, you know, on the same console, but you can't do it because there's no local split screen co op. Or, you know, you, can, you can't race against each other on the same console, which sucks ass. Fucking yay. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun racing game. I'm not really big on racing games because I usually just get pissed off. I played a lot of Burnout Free on the original Xbox. But yeah, I, re I get really pissed off when I play racing games. But yeah, this does quite a good uh, way to like um, socialize with your friends on Xbox Live. You can see like, uh, you know, like, oh, your friend, you know, did this much time on this race and stuff like that. And you can beat your friends and stuff like that. Which is fun. But fucking hell, please can you have local split screen co-op? How hard is it? It's a racing game, come on. Um, yeah, moving on. And a shitty soundtrack, you got down. Like, all the racing games have, like, shitty-ass soundtracks. I don't know why. I mean, like, modern crappy rock bands. Um, Ninja Gaiden 2. Not as good as Ninja Gaiden 1 on the original Xbox. Of course, this uh, series was started back uh, on uh, the NES. But yeah, this, this was not, not as hard as... Uh, Ninja Gaiden on the Xbox, but still, it's a pretty solid game. Um, supposedly, the new Ninja Gaiden sucks, so I'm not gonna buy that, but this one is alright. Uh, it's not great, it's alright. If you're really a, a big fan of Ninja Gaiden, I suppose you should get this, but otherwise, um, stick with the original Ninja Gaiden on the Xbox. Not the original, but the, the one by Team Ninja on the Xbox. Oblivion, the Elder Scrolls. Um, yeah. Uh, not much to say about Oblivion. I should really get this on PC. I think this it's a five year anniversary edition. It's pretty, it has all the DLC and stuff like that. But yeah, I've played for this on the Xbox. You should play this for the PC though. It's a better version for sure. Um, great game. Uh, my favorite Elder Scrolls is probably um, Morrowind. And after that Skyrim. So this comes third. I really didn't care for the main story and this was pretty boring. But overall, it's a fun game. Um, I really, really like the. Um, it com comes with the map, like most Elder Scrolls games. Um, I really like the. Um, and a color manual. I really like the um, Thieves Guild quest in this game. Like the last one, you have to steal the Elder Scrolls from like the big tower. That was epic as hell. And the Dark Brotherhood quest uh, line is also really good. Like, especially when you have to like uh, kill the guy that. First taunted you in the very beginning at the prison. You have to assassinate him. And yeah, those quests are really good. The main quest storyline kind of sucks though. And uh, the pain you thing in this game was that you could harm your allies. So if you play a melee character, it's really easy to strike your allies. And then they instantly turn against you, which sucks ass. But overall, it's a pretty solid game. I would recommend playing Morrowind or uh, Skyrim over this though. You know what the game actually just got for uh, shits and giggles? <laughs> Onichimbara Bikini Samurai Squad. This is an absolute terrible game. Um, sexy Samurai Sisters. Um, yeah. Plays two uh, chicks who kill zombies with 
Samurai Swords. Um, terrible graphics, terrible... There's a lack of storyline, really. I mean, just... Yeah. This is pretty much... I bought this for really cheap, and just for... <laughs> just for shits and giggles, really. Just, like, something you can play with friends and laugh at while having a few beers. Um, yeah, otherwise, it's pretty crap. Actually, I had it coming out with a new one that was long ago. Now. I don't know if it actually will happen. Whatever. Hopefully, it would be better, at least. I don't know. Red Dead Redemption. Of course, uh, Rockstar's game. A sequel to Red Dead Revolver. Awesome Western uh, sandbox game. This game is really fun to play with friends online. Like just doing stupid shit. Uh, hunting bears or just like doing stupid. Just r running off uh, cliffs with horses and wagons and stuff. Great, great game. Um, if you're a fan of GTA, you should play this. Just a great Western uh, themed uh, sandbox game. Then we got Resident Evil 5. Um, should probably get a gold edition of this because I want to play the DLC for this. Uh, really fun co op game. As far as Resident Evil goes, it's not really scary. It's mostly action based. And this place takes place in Africa. It plays Chris Redfield and Sheva. Um, yeah, this is where Resident Evil really turned to action. I mean, 4 had some horror elements. This is pretty much all action. Uh, this is fun to play with a friend. Uh, has split screen as well as um, online play. So yeah, if you play this, I definitely recommend playing with a friend. But overall, don't expect any real scares of this game. Uh, don't know if I'm going to get Resident Evil 6, because I heard bad things about it. So I don't know if I care enough to get it. Saints Row 2. Um, yeah, it's a uh, GTA theme uh, style, I guess. Um, uh, sandbox game. Um, I played Saints Row 1 as well, but I uh, think I sold it to GameStop back when I was actually stupid enough to do that. Because, yeah, they don't really give you back much money for that. Uh, I got uh, handed in because it's pretty much exactly like this game. Um, yeah, this is a really fun, solid game. Um, I got Saints Row the Third as well, but on PS3. Uh, really fun, this is way more kind of like um, crazy than GTA, you know, not really too serious. Um, and, you know, much more customizable op options and stuff like that. So, yeah, if, you, if you're a fan of... Uh, GTA type sandboxes look when you play uh if you you know if you like uh, San Andreas and stuff like that this is really up your alley fun game movie known to yes Shadows of the Damned another Suda Fifty One game um great great game I love this game um this is really kind of like Resident Evil Four um third person shooter really great art style to it the soundtrack is done by Korea Mocha. I think uh, he did the soundtrack for a lot of pop chains as well. He uh, is most famous for uh, Silent Hill. And this is a really fun uh, game. We go into hell and kill demons. And yeah, it, it's, you know, it has a great soundtrack. It's very colorful and interesting. And th there's a lot of humor. The gun talks to you. And there's a lot of dick jokes. <laughs> Terrible title, though. Uh, awesome, quirky, uh, fun game. Really recommend playing this. If you can spare the time. Silent Hill Homecoming. Uh, this is where Silent Hill took a turn for the worst. A lot of people hate the room, but I I still enjoyed it very much. Homecoming, however, it was not very good at all. And this was made by... um, Who the fuck made this? Double Helix. I don't know what they done except this. But yeah, this was not very good at all. Um... They kind of like, I don't, I don't think they really understood the whole theme and whole storyline of the early Silent Hill games. So just kind of like copied that instead of actually, you know, trying to understand the story and trying to make something new and interesting or as a continuation of that. Instead of just like copied, like, oh, you know, just put Pyramid Head in and put Nurses in and uh, it be Silent Hill game. Um, yeah, it wasn't very good. Can't really recommend it. Play Silent Hill 1 through 4. And um, I've heard that Shadow Memories is pretty good. I haven't played it though. But yeah, I don't really recommend Homecoming unless you're a hardcore Silent Hill fan who really want to play another game in the series. Soul Calibur 4, another fighting game. 
another game she probably got in PS3, but we didn't have the PS3 at the time. Because you get Yoda here, and PS3 gets Darth Vader, so... Obvious choice is Darth Vader, right? Uh, this is pretty solid. I still say Soul Calibur 2 is my favorite Soul Calibur game. This was alright. Uh, fifth one I heard is crap. But this one's pretty good. And it's a fighting game where you fight with swords and you have armor and stuff like that too. Which makes it pretty good. Uh, pretty interesting, really. And you got uh, uh, Star Wars characters in this game. You also get the dude from Force Unleashed, but who the fuck wants to play as him? Um, you want to play as Darth Vader, but you get Yoda in this. It's really fucking hard to hit because he's so small. Moving on to Tales of Asperia. Um... Uh, the latest entry in the Tales series. This is probably the best, next to Lost Odyssey, uh, best JRPG on the Xbox 360. Just absolutely fantastic JRPG. Great storyline, great artwork, uh, characters, everything just really great. Really interesting. It has kind of like a mix between real time combat. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it has full real time combat. Basically, but you kind of like you enter fight mode and then it's real time, uh, which makes it a bit more interesting. Um, definitely a solid title, great storyline. This, if you're a fan of JRPGs, you owe it yourself to get this game. Um, I got this at a GameStop actually for quite cheap. Otherwise, it costs quite a lot, at least from what I've seen uh, on Amazon and such. But if you can find it for a decent price and you like JRPGs, please play this. Great game. Definitely gonna get more Tales games. This is the only one I've played so far. There's supposedly another good one on PS2. Uh, this is a uh, kind of arcade triple pack. Get Trials HD, Limbo, and Explosion Man. You get a 320 marks of points um, code as well, which is pretty sweet. Uh, mainly got us for Limbo, one of my favorite indie games. Just great game. Great atmosphere. It's pretty short, but overall, it's a fantastic game. Trials HG is kind of like the uh, all those bike games, all those flash bike games you can play on the internet, but kind of more refined. Tons of levels, uh, really infuriating. I got, I got so pissed off playing this game because it gets quite challenging towards the later levels. Yeah, the same thing as Explosion Man, also quite a hard game, but a really fun uh, 2D platformer. Basically, every button is explode, and that's how you can like jump around, you explode and things. Really fun. Um, yeah, I recommend all three, mostly Limbo, if you don't play that. Explosion Man is a really good game as well. Trials HD, if, you, if you're into the whole bike thing, I guess. Um, yeah, <laughs> really frustrating at times. But overall, uh, really good pack. Actually, I think it's cheaper to get this than uh, buying it on uh, with Microsoft points. Next, we got Vanquish, another game by uh, Platinum Games. Fantastic. Uh, an kind of action-y third-person shooter game. Comes with a special kind of sleeve. Whoa, it's almost like it's 3D. Just gonna, oops, oh, there we go. That's how the game actually looks. Uh, pretty short, it's only single player, but it's a great, great third-person shooter game. You know, ton big bosses, really uh, action-heavy, like, absolutely crazy, like, you have to, like, Destroy rockets in midair while slow motion and like gliding underground. It's it's insane. It's quite short, but it's definitely worth it. You can get it for quite cheap. Uh, really, and the controls in this game is are perfect. Like I played it. It's only on consoles, so but like one of the most best controls I've ever played in the game ever. Just completely super solid. So if you can get a hold of this game, if you like uh, action games and shooters, please play this. Great game. And the final game in my collection, or my 360 collection, is Viking Battle for Asgard. Um, so this game is kind of like um, Overlord, if you've played that. Where it's kind of action game, we go around killing dudes in third person mode. With axes and shit. And you can also like get an army and uh, make like those huge battles and shit. You can like fight trolls and uh, like destroy catapults and stuff. It's pretty fun. Graphics are pretty basic. Um, I have not played Overlord yet. I've actually got it on Steam, but I haven't played through it yet. But I believe Overlord is a better game. But overall, this is pretty solid. And if you like Vikings, this is pretty fucking badass. So yeah, that was in my game collection. It's all like 
fucking mumble up now. But yeah, that was my 360 collection with 69 games. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.